yeah. It depends what kind of music I'm recording. Like, the, I you took I'm a big walk, and walk and your head. Music. Being in a studio like this, first of all, it's a professional atmosphere. We have professional gear. We have people that know what they're doing. There. Uh, let's bring her back to five and then play through them. Yeah. Let's give it one more go then. And yeah, that sounded really good on the course. Okay, cool. So yeah, keep, keep doing that. Okay. okay. It's between working in a home studio and like a professional studio. Um, Number one, more work gets done at a professional studio because of the atmosphere. Um, I noticed that some of the home studios that I've worked in, um, we still get work done, but it takes a lot longer to get the work done. Like a full band with like drums, guitars, vocals. It's like six to nine hours. Yeah. I've been in some pretty grungy studios um, that are, you know, literally somebody's bedroom closet. It's more relaxed. It doesn't feel like you're on the clock, even when you're are on the clock. Like to me, the artist that's paying, I know I'm on the clock, but because I'm in Buddy's home, in his studio or her studio, it's it's a lot more slack for them because it's not, you know, they don't have a time frame. They're like, oh, I'm getting paid. It's all good, right? I'm at home. I'm going to have some coffee and whatever. Um, so a lot more work gets done in a professional studio. Yep. Acoustic guitars are probably the easiest you could ever do. Not vocalists. No, <laughs> especially girl vocalists, because girls are hard to work with, always. <laughs> so. Well, the problem when you're recording a vocalist is just they're so critical of their work that they 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 do often try to interfere with your job because they want to know like oh can I listen to every single take the moment after we record it like because I want to hear if I did <coughs> that right and you have to really like you have to be firm with vocalists keep them in the booth as long as you need keep them doing what you need you get a lot of circumstances where like y you get someone recording like an angry song yeah but they're not angry so you literally like go in there <laughs> kick open the door and just be like hey Quit sucking so much, like, and you just ream them out and then slam the door and they're pissed at you, but they're still, you know, they're, <coughs> they, they get that, that energy and then suddenly they go and they record and they have a sort of, well, fine, screw you attitude. I'll, I'll record it really angry and then it's like, click, that was it. <laughs> come in, listen to this, it's sweet. Sweet, sorry. <laughs> How about you come in here and listen to it though? Okay, okay? sounds good. Okay. Hey, but you don't have a clue. Talk a big walk, your head fills the room. What's side chaining? It's where it's where the control of one <coughs> outboard piece of equipment is is controlled by another. So an example of that being like if you want well a, a common one that's used is called a deesser. So it's where you have an EQ system, which I guess we could explain what that is too. It's where you have an EQ system set up uh, just to let in high frequencies, but then you chain chain the ch it's called side chain the uh, EQ into a compressor. So every time the EQ gets high frequencies in it, it sets the compressor off and compresses your high frequencies. <laughs> Gear is the main thing. Um, that I've worked with a lot of great engineers, but they have really bad equipment, and the two don't don't mix. You can't you can't have bad equipment. You can't. Um, <clears throat> being in a professional studio just also puts me. It just puts me in more of a, a business mind frame. I'm not just in a house or in the buddy's bedroom in his closet in a vocal booth. I have a real vocal booth, and I have you know, a real room for my band, and then the engineer's in a different room, but yet we're all connected. We're not all stuck in this little tiny room, and all you can smell is the seven guys you got around you recording, and it's, it's just, it's cleaner, it's nicer, it's more professional. The reason I can't sleep anymore. I play what I feel. I always play what I feel and I listen to what I feel. Um, my music taste and, and genre liking depends on how I feel that day. I'm a very emotional person, um, so 
that's uh, my music goes with my emotions same as what I decide to dress like that day it's all how I'm feeling my target audience is anybody that needs a little healing that's that's all I don't care who likes my music who doesn't like my music I just want the people that are listening to it I want it to help them my biggest motivation to become an artist was the healing power of music it that is totally why I started recording music and writing music because I grew up relying on music to get me through my hard times. That was the only thing I had. And that was my biggest and number one motivation for doing this. And that is why I do it every day. It's to help people get through life and things that it throws at you. <laughs>